The sudden availability of advanced artificial intelligence platforms forces us to confront not only the evaluation of our own abilities, but even deeper, what it means to be a conscious, self-aware human being. We can explore this from a scientific point of view, as well as from a philosophical point of view. And then it is useful to come to some practical conclusions. My conclusion and exhortation is simple. Don't be a zombie, be a luminary. My name is David Orban, and this is The Context. As many, I have been also very curious about the boundaries of what the recent AI platforms can do and cannot do. They are very good in pretending not only that they know a lot of things, but that they also uh, are able to self-reflect and to understand not only their surroundings, but also to some degree their inner states. There is a fairly wide consensus that even though we don't understand exactly how they work, as of yet, they are just pretending. ChatGPT or GPT-4 are not self-aware. But this is the right moment to improve our understanding of what is human self-awareness and why we feel it is indeed a unique phenomenon. There are many ways of uh, going about this. Traditionally, it would be meditation. It would be the practice of philosophical, even metaphysical uh, uh, processes, procedures, experiences. But there is a series of uh, scientific disciplines that open doors to our understanding of the processes in the brain that give rise to the phenomenon that we call self-awareness. I had the opportunity to have conversations uh, around this with practitioners of some of these disciplines. For example, uh, with an anesthesiologist who um, applies uh, specific chemicals uh, during uh, surgical procedures, for example, to make sure that the patients uh, do not feel pain, cannot voluntarily move, and are not aware of uh, what is going on uh, around them. And the practitioners of this um, particular field of uh, science uh, understand the various levels very clearly uh, because they must intervene in a delicate manner, keeping the patients uh, in a state that is intermediate between the higher functions uh, when we are fully awake and the vegetative support systems, the infrastructure that keeps our bodies going, as well as those of the patients uh, while they are being operated on. Another discipline that uh, is uh, extremely complex, but also very important is that of psychiatry. Uh, that observes uh, when people uh, suffer from depression or psychotic conditions such as schizophrenia or paranoia or others, and it uh, tries to apply various techniques uh, that uh, are able uh, to at least some degree um, maintain these conditions 
under control or even having them regress. Over the years, both of these have uh, been able to um, produce better outcomes. Uh, if uh, the first uh, operations uh, were conducted without anesthesia and uh, the best quality of a surgeon was that of operating very fast when they would be cutting off your leg, today um, the process is extremely reliable to the point when something goes wrong there is uh, an inquiry to understand what that was who made the mistake and uh, how that mistake can be avoided in the future a little bit like when we fly with an airplane the first airplanes were unreliable but today uh, we uh, go and travel locally, intercontinentally, and uh, airplanes just do not crash. Similarly, psychiatry uh, has um, used uh, extremely blunt uh, tools like lobotomy, for example, uh, which is a surgical uh, process, a surgical procedure that uh, we have uh, luckily abandoned that uh, actually deprives uh, the subject of a lot of higher functions with the supposed uh, benefit of avoiding them negative effects of their previous condition or uh, the separation of the two um, hemispheres of the brain again uh, surgically by cutting the corpus callosum and um, Today, um, psychiatrists uh, still belonging to different uh, schools of thought are more and more considering uh, the uh, people who come for help, uh, trying to understand both uh, their biology, their metabolism, uh, whether um, giving them uh, lithium, for example, can help. Uh, or uh, other chemicals, but also to understand their surrounding and uh, what uh, potential environmental effects uh, provoke uh, their suffering. I am not a fan of uh, horror movies or even more... Um, um, easy to digest uh, segments and sections uh, like for example the tales and uh, fictional representations of zombies uh, i'm too impressionable but i am aware of the concept a zombie for every uh, aspect is like a human but they were brought back from the dead and now they function um, often very angry uh, without thinking instinctively uh, going about their business which as i am told typically involves eating other people's brains a zombie uh, is not conscious a zombie will not feel pain or emotions they will not fear death um, they are going uh, forward as an automaton, as a human-shaped uh, flesh robot. In philosophy, uh, there is the concept of P-zombies, philosophical zombies, which don't need to be dead before being a zombie. They are looking as humans for every purpose except that their inner life is cancelled and philosophers use this uh, concept of pea zombies to highlight how difficult it is uh, from their point of view to um, ascertain what it is uh, that we call consciousness and self-awareness 
even though if you ask an anesthesiologist, they will answer, well, next time try to be operated on without anesthesia. It is, I think, a useful exercise for everyone to try and understand what they are, who they are, and do it in every aspect uh, of their life. Taking care of their bodies, eating well, but also taking care of their mental health and, as a consequence, understand how they function and how their mind functions and observing their higher conscious experiences, being able to reflect on them and improve uh, their self-awareness through this introspection. If you wish, it is much better, I believe, for every human to be as far from being a zombie as possible. And the term that is kind of the opposite of a zombie is to be a luminary. Someone who is curious and is able to not only um, absorb sensorial inputs, but is able to reflect on them, who is able to feel the whole range of emotions attached to their experiences and seek those experiences and then of course transfer the opportunity of proving those experiences that provoke positive emotions. A luminary uh, is fully aware of themselves and the emotional states and inner states of others. Luminaries will participate actively in society and they will plan to build a future that is worth living. Don't be a zombie, be a luminary. Thank you.